Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for Game Week 10 for the 5% series where I try and help you decide which of the popular players are worth having because if you only choose the popular players and you choose the right ones you should finish in the top 5% globally which means you'll do alright in your mini leagues. We start by looking at how the players did in Game Week 9 and don't worry this won't take long. So the goalkeepers, Henderson finally got a clean sheet, he got 8 and the other keepers got nothing. For the defenders, Gvardiel 9, Lewis 6. Virgil van Dijk got a goal, which was nice. He got 7 points for that. And that's all. So there were many players didn't score any points this week. But one or two of the popular players did quite well, which is why a lot of people got around the 50, 60, 70 point mark. Midfielders, Embremo 15, Salah 10, Palmer 10, Saka 9, Smithrow 6. Rogers won. So these are all popular players and the ones of these that you didn't have are the ones that would have hurt your rank. The slightly less popular, Bowen 7, Eze 6, Luis Diaz 5. Then Winx got an assist, he got 4. Regarding the forward, Wood 13, Jackson 9, Welbeck 7, Haaland 6. And then the slightly less popular forwards, Vardy 8, Isaac 6. And that's all. So we're now going to look at what I think of the players in the various positions in FPL. There are a number of players that are being bought quite heavily at the moment, but in the large scheme of things, they're still very lowly owned. So they're not in the system. For example, Kuna of Wolves, and there are no doubt be other players that are being talked about a lot, hyped up, but they're just not popular enough to worry about because if they do well and you don't have them, it's not going to hurt your rank. So for the keepers, Raya is still a good keeper. And interestingly enough, I think all the keepers in our system this week have all got an away game. I think there's a reasonably good chance there'll be no clean sheets for the keepers this week that we've got. So Raya's all right. If you're wildcarding, he's all right to get. I may get him if I was wildcarding. Depends what else I had. I wouldn't bother bringing him in though. Sanchez, I think, is the second most popular and he's all right. But again, no clean sheet this week. We have Flecken, Henderson, Pickford. A little kind of meh this week. Now, generally speaking, you don't want to be making goalie transfers. But I think personally, I've, I'm on my sixth goalkeeper so far. So I've made quite a few transfers myself. But that's not the right thing to do. It's because I'm doing something in particular. And the slightly less popular keepers, we have Martinez at 5 million, which is quite expensive. Next two games, away to Spurs, away to Liverpool. They're not great at all. Ariola 4.4 and Fabianski I'm introducing because he is popular but he was down as one of just one of the four million goalkeepers that never plays but he's he played last game week and Ariola was on the bench which implies maybe he's going to be first choice for a while and if that's the case it means your second goalkeeper could be a four million goalkeeper that does actually play so I'm not suggesting you all go out there and buy him but if you want to free up some cash Fabianski may be the way to go but there's a risk involved in that it may be him and Ariola are going to be swapping every other week or something so we don't know yet that Fabianski is going to be first choice but he may be I needed some cash so I brought him in I sold Edison to get him and that gave me one and a half million but I'm not <laughs> suggesting you should do that and then Ward he represents any four million keeper that's not going to play for the popular defenders Gvardio is now the most important player what I should have said, and I forgot, is as we go through the players in each position, the first one you see is the most important one, which is the one that's likely to hurt your rank the most if you don't have them. It doesn't mean you have to buy them, but just be aware if you are making changes, try to go for the players in that position as early on as possible. So Gvardio is now in the position that he's going to hurt your rank more than the other defenders if you don't have him. Then it's Trent, and they are both good players Probably. If I could only have one, I would probably still go Trent, but they are both good defenders at the moment. Then Lewis is up there. He's not scoring as well as Gvardiol, but he does seem to be holding on to his minutes at the moment. But any Man City player, apart from Edison, who's not in the system, and Haaland, is a risk for minutes. Robinson's quite nice and cheap. And then Gabriel, so he went off injured. We don't know if he's going to be playing the next game, but the next two games are away to Newcastle, away to Chelsea. So possibly no clean sheets there. If you've got him, he's fine to keep. If you've not got him, absolutely don't buy him. 
if you want to sell him and move him on for someone possibly cheaper that's absolutely fine as well if you want to keep him that's fine but you're slightly risking one of your premium defenders isn't going to be playing then Pedro Porro is still popular enough to hurt you a little bit if he does well and you don't have him and then the next set of defenders so Canate he's growing in popularity Liverpool are quite good at keeping clean sheets and he's only 5.3 million so if that's all you could afford for a defender he's all right the other Liverpool defenders are better that are in this system but he's all right then Virgil van Dijk he's going up in popularity because he scored and he played for a good defense van de ven he's nice and cheap 4.7 Masaru 4.6 so United have finally got rid of Eric Ten Hag. They're probably going to have Van Nistelrooy in charge for this weekend, but after that they've got a new manager. There is often something called a new manager bounce, which happens. So Man United players may do better than they have been the next few weeks, and the new manager may make them play better anyway. So the typically popular Man United players, like Rashford, Fernandez, Garnacho, it's likely people are going to be buying them in the coming weeks. They are still in the system, but they're quite low at the moment. And then well, Fass, he's just bench fodder. Konza for 4.5. Fass actually gets played by more people than Konza. And then the last page of defenders, we have Mikolenko, he's bench fodder, 4.3. Vanderberg, bench fodder. Saliba, 6 million. He obviously didn't play last game week, but loads of managers that had him have now sold him, and I doubt many are going to buy him to a game week 12. We're just going into game week 10. So... If you have Saliba, it's fine to sell him. If you want to keep him, you can. It's safe you're having to buy him in a couple of weeks' time. But if he does well and you don't have him, you don't need to worry. He's not going to hurt your rank. Then Anderson, he's nice and cheap for Fulham 4.3. I've not made him bench fodder. He is kind of just about worth having. Maybe I should have made him bench fodder, but he's all right. And then Harwood Bell is 4.1 bench fodder. And then we have Burn at 4.4. He's in the system because initially he was quite popular, but Newcastle haven't been great with keeping clean sheets. So if he was just going to be sitting on your bench, you may rather have a 4 million like Van der Berg sitting on your bench than burn and save the 0.4. It's not worth using a transfer to get rid of him, except if you've got five and nothing else to do, or if you're wildcarding, then you could move him on. And then Greaves is injured. He's totally sellable. He's going to be back potentially in three or four game weeks time, but he's 4.1 million. So you're not going to be freeing up any cash by getting rid of him. But if you wanted to, you could. But at the moment, the next few game weeks, he's going to be useless for you. For the midfielders, Salah now becomes the most important midfielder. He's the midfielder that's likely to score points that's going to hurt you the most if you don't have him. It's not worth taking lots of hits to bring him in, but you might want to be thinking, do you want to be bringing him in? So you can't own all the premiums that are going to do well. Realistically, you can't own them all and still have decent players. So Salah, Palmer, Haaland, Saka... It's very difficult to own those four and the rest of your squad to be all right. Some managers are thinking about they're going to hop every few weeks between the ones they think have got good fixtures. I think that's a bit risky. I kind of think you're going to get caught out if you do that. You should just think which two or three do I want and try and stick with those. If you want to just go for one premium, that's fine. But on the weeks that the premiums you don't have do well, because they're highly owned, they are going to hurt your rank. Palmer's only just behind Salah regarding how much is it going to hurt you if you don't own him. There are plenty of managers that don't own both of these at the moment and certainly don't own both of these and Haaland. So don't panic too much if you don't have these two, but you want to kind of think, can you bring them in in the next few weeks if you don't? And Bremer, you definitely want to have him because he's only 7.7. He's very highly owned. Then Rogers, he's highly owned, but he often sits on the bench with people. He will this week probably. He's away to Spurs. But he's he is actually quite good. He's not brilliant yet, but he's still quite good. And then Saka is good. We thought he might be into the last game week. Lots of managers sold him, including me. But he was fit and available. So managers are now buying him. He's not going to hurt you as much as Embremo Palmer or Salah will, though. If they all did as well as each other, Saka is the one that's going to hurt you the least at the moment. And then Smithrow, he's nice and cheap. And he was getting sold off a couple of weeks ago, but because he got an assist the last game, he's going up in value now. And the next three games are Brentford, Palace and Wolves. Reasonably good chance Fulham could score on all those, so he may well be involved. 
Next set of midfielders, we have McNeil. He's flagged as potentially injured. And he is going to go down in value. He may have already gone down slightly. But the games are Southampton, West Ham, Brentford, Man United. He could get decent returns on all of those. But if he's injured, he's not going to get anything, of course. But he's all right. 5.8 million. Absolutely, I wouldn't be buying him at the moment. But if you've got him, you don't need to panic sell him. So Johnson was popular because Spurs had a nice run of fixtures. And he's not really performed. People are gradually selling him off now. But... He's got Ipswich game after next. That could be all right. Luis Diaz is not as popular as he once was, but Liverpool do have nice fixtures. Bowen, he's down here as a good player because he is a good player. And he just keeps getting five, six, seven points. Occasionally he might do better. Sometimes you get two points. So if you're a bit of a risky manager, you like the fun of the upside, you could buy Bowen because he keeps performing. But you don't need to worry about not buying him and the whole point in the series is which players do you need to worry about you don't need to worry about Bowen as a again once pop player very nice one of fixtures he's not going to hurt you at the moment though and Garnacho, I fully expect him to be working up this list as he gets more and more popular I'm also expecting him to be scoring points so although he's not green yet I expect the next week or two he's going to be turning green and he's going to be popular last page of midfielders Sun he missed the last game with injured. We don't know if he's going to be playing this game week or not. But he's now so lowly owned. If you've got him, it's fine to move him on for another midfielder that's green, that's more of a premium. That's probably what I'd do, even though he's at home to Aston Villa and home to Ipswich next game week. Because he's a bit of a risk, he is fine to move on. Absolutely, I wouldn't be buying him now. You can keep him if you want to. He's just a bit dodge. Then Semenyo... He's only 5.6. He'll often sit on your bench. And after this game week, he's got some nice fixtures. Winks, bench fodder, 4.5 million. He's fine. Dibbling, 4.6, bench fodder. Fernandez, 8.2. Hardly anyone owns him. But like Garnacho, I suspect the next few game weeks, he's going to be going up in popularity quite a bit. And then I'm saying, if you've got Jago Jota, we should sell him. He's definitely out for the next few game weeks. Then there's the international break. So there's a reasonable chance he won't get many many minutes the first game week back 7.3 million you can definitely transfer him out even if it's for a hit and you should be able to choose someone else who's going to score you more than the four points he's going to cost you to get rid of him so he's going to be out of our system after this game week and then Gordon he's now very lowly owned if that's a word in that context he's not going to hurt you he's completely sellable but he's also fine to have home to Arsenal and then he's got Forest, and he's home to West Ham, and then he's got Palace. He could get some points there. But again, he's somebody that you absolutely don't need to fear. There's nobody on this page you need to worry about not owning because they're not going to hurt you this game week. Now, for these forwards, who's going to hurt you? If you've not got Haaland, he's going to hurt you. There's lots of talk within the FPL community about, oh, I'm going to sell Haaland. I might sell Haaland. Should I sell Haaland to get in Salah, to get in Palmer? The reality is there aren't lots of people selling him at the moment. Because the risk is if you do sell him and he does all right and he may do, he's going to really hurt your rank. And the chances are a lot of managers bought him when he was cheaper than he is now. So if you sell him and then you get regret, it's going to be more difficult to bring him back in. At the moment, I'm holding on to him. That doesn't mean I'm not going to sell him in a week or two. But at the moment, personally, I'm keeping him. It's not worth bringing him in unless you happen to be wildcarding. So if you've not got him, don't worry about not having him. Don't worry too much about not having him. If you're going to sell him, that's okay. But just be aware of the risks involved. And then Wood, he's popular. He's 6.4. He is currently flagged. He said himself that he's all right. He feels good. Whether or not that's the case, don't know. But he's someone who can hurt you because he just keeps scoring points. And he, like I said, he's quite popular. Watkins is getting sold a lot this game week to bring in other players. And Villa, they're away to Spurs, away to Liverpool, next two game weeks. Then week after that, as in four game weeks time, they're away to Chelsea. So people are thinking he's not going to score many points. 9.1 million is quite a lot. There are some cheap strikers that you can get and they're just trying to free up money. So Jackson, he's 7.9 million. He's good. He's growing in popularity. 
And Chelsea have got Man United and Arsenal, so it's not great. But then from game week 12, they do have a nice run of fixtures. So assuming he stays fit, he will be growing in popularity. So Watkins to Jackson, that's quite a nice move. And it frees up about 1.2 million, depending on what price you bought Watkins at. And then Welbeck, he's currently flagged. But he's quite nice. But the next two fixtures aren't very good for Brighton. And then Raul Jimenez is one of these cheaper players. I think we introduced him last week or week before. And he's growing in popularity a lot. So a lot of people are selling Watkins to buy Raul Jimenez. And then with the extra funds, they're improving their midfield. Next set of forwards, we have Vardy, who I personally quite like. He's a good player. Way to Ipswich this game week. But he's not massively popular. If he does well, he's not going to hurt you. Solanke's been disappointing. He's getting sold by quite a lot of managers, even though the next two games are at home. So that's interesting to see what happens there. But as things stand, he's not going to hurt you much if he does well. Havertz, a lot of people have been getting rid of him, so he's not going to hurt you. Calvert-Lewin, although he's cheap, he's just not been producing. So he's getting sold by a lot of managers. If you've got him, he's fine to keep. He's away to Southampton this week. He may finally get something there. Then he's got West Ham, who defensively aren't great. Then he's at home to Brentford, who just attack, so they tend to let in goals. Personally, I wouldn't be buying him now, even on a wild card. You don't have to get rid of him, but he's fine to get rid of if you want to. So Isaac, we had very high expectations for him at the beginning of the season. At some point, he's going to come good, but he's very lowly owned. It's fine to wait until you bring him in, wait for him to be good. If you've got him, he's okay to keep, but you don't need to worry about him hurting you if you've not got him. And then any four and a half million bench fodder striker who's not going to play. So if the 15 players in your squad are based on just the players we've looked at here, and you bias each position to the ones that we saw earlier on, preferably going for green ones when you can, you should do all right, basically. And you will get small greens and small reds most week, but you'll get the greens to be better than the reds and you'll gradually move up the ratings. That's the theory anyway, and I think it should work. We're now going to look at the benching order, starting with the keepers. You do whatever you like. This is just my suggestion based on the players we've seen. And it's based on how many points I think they may get and how highly owned I think they're going to be and all these sort of things. This is all about trying to get hurt by players, basically. And I think there's a reasonable chance that none of these keepers are going to keep a clean sheet this week. So Ward or any 4 million keeper that's not playing, then it'd be Ariola, Fabianski. Probably only one of those is going to play. If they both play, it's because one of them gets sent off or injured. Then it'd be Henderson, Flecken, Martinez, Pickford, Sanchez and Rea. And now we're going to look at the other players. The first player you see you've got, I suggest, goes in position three in your bench, then position two, then position one. So that's Greaves, of course he's injured. Any four and a half million striker, because they're not going to play. Vanderberg, Byrne, Konza, Mikolenko, Howard Bellis, Vals, Anderson, Masrul, Semenyo, Winks, Dibbling, Van der Ven, Robinson, Konate, Welbeck, Garnacho, Fernandez, Eze, Calvert Lewin. Then Bowen, Rogers, Gordon, Johnson, McNeil, who may not play, but if he does, hopefully you get enough time to do something. Pedro Porro, Smithrow, Vardy, Saliba, Lewis, Gabriel, Gvardiol, Virgil van Dijk, Trent, Solanke, Isaac, Havertz, Watkins, Jackson, Luis Diaz, Sun, and Wood. Regarding captaincy, I think that Salah is a very good choice to wear the old mule hat. And among the engaged managers, I suspect he would be the most captained. But over the whole player base, I suspect Haaland to be the most captained. But these are both good choices, as is Palmer, as is Saka. They're all fine. And there'd be very few teams that own all four of these. So whichever one of these you don't own, if they happen to do well, they're going to potentially hurt your rank a little bit. And then Embremo is also a good choice this week. And if you want to go out there a bit and take a bit of a risk, go for a big upside, well, Jimenez may be a good choice. So any of these for captain, any of these for vice captain, that's a perfectly good choice. If you can't choose two of these or you don't want to choose two of these, any of the players that were green that were attacking in the previous pages, they'll also be good choices. As for the background picture this week, 
So on this day, October the 30th in 1938, that's when Orson Welles' War of the Worlds was broadcast in radio in New York. So for those that don't know, it's a story about Martians coming down invading the Earth, but they, the listeners were not told it was a story. It was done as little news articles throughout the evening. So people thought it was really happening. And this is the first instance, potentially, of fake news. And we hear a lot about fake news now. So if in the next few years you hear about an alien invasion, just be aware, actually, that could be fake news. So there we have it. That's my suggestions for the popular players for Game Week 10. And if you just choose from these players and you choose the most popular of the popular players, hopefully you're too all right. Thank you very much for watching. If you leave any comments, I'll try and reply. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>